Hello everyone. Today we are going to be laser cutting a map. Now it's going to be a small map because they can take a while, but we're going to do a map. So someone has shown me this website called snazzymaps.com where you can uh, find maps from all around. Uh, basically create your own map of wherever you want. So go to snazzymaps.com and click on build a map. Now, I've already looked for the style before, but you're going to need to, under style, choose a map style, and you want to choose epilogue. You want to search for epilogue. Uh, epilogue is a laser company, and they've created and put their own style in here. And there's reverse, uh, thick, thin. I want to go with epilogue thin. The reverse, obviously, does colors in reverse. So I choose that and I apply, ooh, I choose that and I apply style and now size and location. So click on that and width and height, you can fiddle around with, it's going to you know, put it into to here, but it's not really so important because we're going to take a screenshot, not actually download this. Now you can search for your location or whatever you want to do a map of by latitude and longitude which is a real neat thing to play with sometimes just put in random latitudes and longitudes and see what you get but you can also search for a location and you can do it by city let's uh check out rome well there's a rome georgia rome new york uh italy and there's a map of rome italy you can also search by zip code Oh, maybe. Yep, there we go. And that's the zip code I am living in. So take your pick on what you want to search for, the city you want to do, the latitude and longitude, the zip code, and then you need to play with your zoom level. What do you really want to get onto here? Now you can scroll with your mouse and get zoom level, or you can actually use a scroll bar to get zoom level, or you can put in numbers. So there's different ways. But you, you get where you want to get the detail that you want to get and then click apply chart and you can also um, adjust the location of your of where you are at in that part of the area uh, by using your cursor your mouse and that hand and just kind of dragging along so I'll go with that for now apply changes so we've got size location and there's one other thing that I already had done and it's this controls usually it comes in with default map controls this up here in the upper right for a large screen the map and satellite you kind of want to hide controls probably to get rid of that from your map um, there's custom that you could also if you want to fiddle with that go ahead but apply changes and there is your map now you want to take a screenshot of that so figure out how on your computer to take a screenshot i've already done that and my screenshot is up here and now I'm going to go to my laser software and mine is Lightburn and there's my Lightburn I got in a new window up and I want to import file import that image which is this screenshot now Lightburn you might be in millimeters you can switch this over to inches you should be easily be able to do that for yourself and it's telling me I've got a seven by 10 inch map. Now, that's actually gonna take a while to etch. Um, how, how long will that take to etch? Let's see, preview says that will take an hour and 15 minutes. The orange is the pass and the black is actually what's being cut. And down here it's telling me an hour and 15 minutes. So you need to plan accordingly. Now I can change the size of this. Very easy, grab the corners. Uh, don't grab the top, middle, bottom, middle, side, middles because you're going to just change the proportion of it, possibly, unless you're sure you're locked up here. Locked is going to keep the aspect ratio. So that is, now I really can just go hit um, run, start, send. But here's the things you're going to want to play with. 
and you're gonna have to try and adjust these it came in as an image and it's going to etch as an image which is different than vector it's going to actually shade in color and burn in all the, all the black and you're going to have to play with the speed and the powers that you want to do i don't want zero min power that tends to not do well I usually keep them close to the same if not the same now your laser might only be able to go down to a certain power percent before if it's not even doing anything. I think we tested on ours and we weren't getting anything under 8%. So that's things you have to look at. And then the speed also. You can't go too fast because you won't get an image, but if you go too slow, it will really burn in and burn deep. So you're gonna have to play with that. The other thing to fiddle with is this DPI, this line interval dots per inch and uh, interval in between the laser lines and they're tied together so if you change one the other one changes i really just stick with the defaults for now until you know better but it's all an experiment there's lots of variables to play with the final thing that you could play with in a work and this is because it's an image is the mode that it's going to do the image there are a whole bunch of different modes you might have been thinking grayscale, half tone, I mean, so things to play with. Right now, dither seems to be the easiest. I'm told grayscale kind of makes the best one once you figure it out and get the detail down. So I'm just going to let it go with dither. And I'll play with the speeds. And then that's what I'm going to get. Again, the, the time it's going to take is going to be kind of your factor on what you do now one other thing you could do is we could cut this as a vector but we're going to, have to convert it to a vector because right now it's an image it's like a bitmap so we need to uh, i'm told you can right click and there's a trace image you can also go to the tools on lightburn and come down and find trace image Either will get you to what we want to do. What it's going to do is the software is going to convert all those lines into a vector. See all the purple there, the magenta. And it's got some cutoffs you can play with. It tends to do a pretty pretty darn good job. Threshold you can play with a little bit if you want to. But it does a pretty good job. I click OK. And there's actually now an image and a vector right on top of each other. So I need to grab one, move it that's the vector and it's going to cut it cut as vector as you notice over here we now have a line setting it's still in zero zero so i should probably change that how do i, ch how do I change that cut name let's go see, let's see if i can go see zero one see if that'll let me do that okay now i hadn't well, let's see if I can color it. There we go. All right. So I colored it so I can distinguish between them. The colors don't matter. It's just for me to distinguish between one versus the other. And I would have different settings. So now you have to look at your settings for vector cutting. And 120 would just burn right through. Probably, well, it might not burn through the wood. But... We'll have to look at look at those settings the software does a pretty good job and i would want to delete the image and then i would vector cut that now here's what we're going to get when we do this it is something that looks like this this is the image etched slowly with the default settings i think i did and then this is the image when I sped it up a little bit, I think this was one, uh, 200 and I sped it up to 100 speed. So you see, there's not as much burn in the areas uh, that we've got water really on the waterways and some of the roads that were thicker lines. It is actually burning through the wood. Now here is the vector cut. Notice a difference. It's not burning in for like the water. So some people like one versus the other. 
I'm not sure which I like better. I, I kind of like both. I this the, the one on the left I think is too burned, so I don't like that as much. I like the one that's less burned. And now some people are thinking that kids might want to grab a uh, marker, some paint, some resin if you're working with resin and fill in some of the like the waterways or the major roads that they want to or they could color them in here on, on the vector part if they want to add some add a little bit of color add a little bit of pop and it's a good experiment for them to see you know if i just add a little bit of pop to it what does it do and how does it change it so there you are with the map you can just cut you can just etch the image you have to play with the settings to get what you want and each, each kind of wood is going to be different remember that this is um, eighth inch birch. And then this is uh, the vector cut. It doesn't cut all the way through because of the speed and power that we utilized. It's just gonna make markings and cut through a little bit. So there's map. That's, it's pretty simple and works out pretty well. Now the whole thing is a discussion about why, you know, what's the significance of that map and the parts on the map and things on the map. That's where the real learning for the content comes in. Have a good day.